Hey guys, Pastor Mill here with another video. Now this video shouldn't be long guys. I'm kind of tired. I'm only getting home about 20 minutes ago and it's it's quarter to two in the morning. So anyhow, you can tell I'm, uh, I'm a little pooped. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long day. Now a lot of people are under the impression that a pastor uh, basically, his job ends at the end of service. <laughs> That's a very small part of the job, guys. We get a phone call that somebody's sick or their family member is coming close to end of life. That sort of thing, you know, hospices, all those sorts of things. And you sometimes get that call at 11.30, even 2 and 3, 4 o'clock in the morning that it's almost time and we would like for you to be there with the family. Those things happen a little too often unfortunately and you know the family wants comfort there's somebody there that you know they want to hear a spiritual word a spiritual truth just a hug maybe just some reassurance with the word of god and using scripture to uh help fill one's heart that is you know under pressure and is a void of any hope at times and you know uh, that's what the pastor also has to do so yeah a pastor has a lot more to do than just go to church give services that sort of thing and you know there's a lot more to the job guys a lot more and uh, sometimes it can be pretty demanding. So this video shouldn't be too long at all. I just wanted to do this video basically to point out and tell everybody to go on over and watch Mr. Predicto Doug's last video he did. And I thought I would do this video, you know, to get people to understand that when you speak on your own behalf, people can go, yeah, whatever. But when there's other people who speak on your behalf, it kind of adds credibility to you and there's many people who are making comments in that video that get it and Doug is certainly one of those people who truly gets it and you know I just thought it was important you go over and watch that video and I don't want to play his clips and all that stuff I think it's important that he presented to you the way he wants to so I'm gonna let him do all that you can go on over and watch the video but we're gonna talk now about a few things concerning what Doug's video is about as well as some comments that were made by a particular person called Tuanda. And of course, we're going to touch on a little bit about Stellar and concerning the last couple of videos I did about it. Anyhow, guys, let's talk about it. Now first, this lady Tawanda, who I kind of think I heard that name before, and a few people mentioned to me that she's actually an old Natasha Cooper supporter. Whether that's true or not, I really don't know. But anyhow, this lady, Tawanda, she decided to come on over, and I guess you watched the video that I did on Stellar, and she said this. She says, you need to listen instead of talking. I guess she thinks I talk so much, but you do sort of talk a lot when you're doing a video. <laughs> anyhow, the only one I see shaming is you. I wasn't shaming anybody. Like I said, you might want to produce a few receipts. Uh, all I did was correct Stellar with Scripture. Then she says, I will pray for you. You have no idea what Stellar has done to our community. You are fighting a battle that is wrong. I'm sure you will be showed the truth. Well, Tawanda, I never insulted Stellar. I never ran him down. I didn't shame him. I played his clips and I responded to his clips with biblical information. If you say that's shaming, well, you need to define the meaning of shaming a little better because you are truly off. The meaning of shaming has nothing to do with correcting someone biblically. This was one of the best comments I read concerning this post that someone responded. Blue Girl 101 replied and said this, Doing things for the community does not necessitate that you are scripturally correct. <laughs> That's very true. Just because somebody is doing well for other people, that sort of thing, that doesn't mean they're not in error. <laughs> doing good for somebody is good, but at the same time, it doesn't make you factually correct <laughs> on other topics. So she made a great quote. I'm going to go with that comment because it sums it up pretty good. Of course, there's several other comments. You can go to my channel and see my last video concerning Stellar, and you can read what uh, Tuanda said, and you can read all the comments, and you might find that very interesting. But here's where it goes off the rails. 
I guess to one, it wasn't getting the response, the negative, hateful responses that she probably gets from others in other communities. But most people, for the most part, on my channel, are pretty faithful, peaceful, and loving. And in fact, I don't think I have a whole lot of subs who aren't actual Christians on my channel. So you're going to pretty much get comments that make sense, that are logical, intelligent, and probably not that harsh or hateful. So anyhow, Tawan is not getting the response, that hateful response that she could feed off of. So what does she do? She tries to up the game <laughs> and really launch a slanderous attack in many ways on me. I guess she was trying to get a response out of whoever she could. And she said this. Your Pastor Mill isn't a pastor. He calls himself that. He's a groomer for single young ladies. I've seen him. Just wait, you'll see. <laughs> my question is how does a biblical conversation turn to this honestly if she thinks i'm in error in the bible which she doesn't seem to actually uh say she has a difference of opinion but she rather slander somebody run them down and try to distract everybody from the truth and make false allegations and of course slander statements towards me which is absolutely ridiculous now she says in that statement she says, your pastor Mill isn't the pastor. He calls himself that. Well, this is the part where I say, go on over and watch uh, Doug's video. Doug sums it up. It shows proof and evidence and all that sort of thing. It's ridiculous that people have to go as far as prove themselves. I mean, I have videos up on my channel where I'm giving sermons and everything else. There's all kinds of uh, pictures of me out there in uh, church and services, those sorts of things. If you don't like what I have to say about scripture, correct me on that. But what's with the personal attacks? So go on over watch Doug's video, he puts it all together perfectly. And it's uh, one of my most favorite videos he did actually. <laughs> I love it, it's so good. Now of course I don't want anybody to go over and bother that lady to one or anything like that or give her any grief. I say guys look, let's just pray for the lady, let's send her our blessings and put it all in the Lord's hands, you know. We have no point to drive home here, we have no reason to go over and start, you know, uh, giving her a hard time, that sort of thing. I think as Christians we should just pray for her, put it in the Lord's hands and uh, give it up to Him to deal with. That would be the best thing to do. But, I would just like to take this opportunity here and speak to her personally with an open heart. Tawanda, you don't know me and I don't know you. Well, I would love to get to know you, and you're welcome to my channel anytime, my dear. You can come on over, have a conversation with everybody, throw in your thoughts on the scriptures, your, let us know what God has done for you in your life, all those sorts of things. This is what my channel is for, and I certainly hope that uh, you take me up on my invitation. I would like to talk to you sincerely based on what you say may have no effect on me, but it may certainly have effect on other people. So when you say slanderously, He's a groomer for single young ladies. How do you think that would get over in a community like mine? People base their faith and trust in somebody like myself. How do you think people in my community would feel when they read such a comment like that? But better yet, how do you think my three beautiful daughters and my wife would feel when they read something like that? Just look at my family. Look how beautiful they are. I got three beautiful girls, a wife of 34 years. I have two beautiful grandbabies. Why would you slander a man in a position of such blessings? A man who's a leader over his family, his community, his church. Why would you say slanderous things about a man like me and take the opportunity, not to just to try to stab me in the heart, but also those who love me? Why would you say such a thing? I mean, just look at my family. They're absolutely beautiful and they mean the world to me. And yes, my children and my wife sometimes go, not necessarily participate, but they certainly read a lot of the comments that are sent to me and people back home in my church too. But yet you feel it's okay just to throw out slanderous statements with absolutely zero, and I mean zero, receipts. And I'm sure people in these communities love receipts, right Tawanda? So, if you have any receipts where I'm grooming young ladies, because you go on to say, I've seen him. You've seen me groom young ladies? <laughs> You've seen me groom other young women in our community, in YouTube? You say, I've seen him. Then you go on to say to and me, and I guess you're making a blanket statement here when you say, just wait, you'll see. 
See what? <laughs> so you decided upon yourself to try to reveal me to be something that I'm not? Just like Kim and Crafton tried many times and other people like Natasha Cooper, who I'm going to speak on briefly about? But I want to stay on to one for a minute here in this conversation. So it's so easy for you to say, i seen it. Man, receipts are very important. And if you have any receipts, please, I'll put them up on my channel for everybody to see. And of course, you have your own channel, so you certainly could uh, make things work, right? Just wait. You'll see. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to have to wait. <laughs> This is ridiculous, man, and shameful. And you know something? I don't have a personal beef with Stellar. I really don't. Now, he drew me into a few videos. He mentioned me, all that sort of thing, which I completely ignored. You know what I mean? <laughs> but then he kept bringing me up, that sort of thing. So I went over and looked at his videos, and once I did, I was shocked. So then I decided, seeing that he's speaking from a place of authority, three degrees, 40 years on the pulpit, he put himself up there in a place of knowledge. And when I heard his videos, he was wrong. So I used the opportunity to clip up his videos and prove what he said did not align with Scripture. That's it. That's as far as my relationship with Seller goes. That's it. And for some reason, it drawn you to a point of where you had to slander a man and perhaps hurt his family and his community in doing so. Shame. Which brings me to Natasha Cooper and Kim and Crafton. Well, a lot of people don't know, but I had a run-in with Natasha Cooper a couple of years back. When I first came to the community, I did not have a channel. True Crime Insider was involved with a lot of the drama, which I talked her out of participating in. <laughs> but anyhow, she introduced me to this whole Gabby Petito thing, all that. So one day, True Crime Insider texted me and said, Pastor Mill, come over and watch this woman, how she talks about God and uses blasphemous stuff, but while trying to embrace the name of Jesus as a cover. So I went over to a live stream, I seen it, and I was shocked. So at that day, Natasha decided to put an open panel up. Anyone has any grievances with her, come on up. She'll take you on. So I had the perfect opportunity. So I went up on her channel. I called her out for cursing and swearing and using the Lord's name in vain, being very blasphemous and cursing her mouth off like a drunken sailor when we all know what the scripture says about those sorts of things. My point to Natasha is that if you're going to come off and try to immolate the word of Jesus, but at the same time immolate the words of Satan, those two cannot come together. So I called Natasha out on it, and from that day forward, seeing that she was probably ashamed and embarrassed on her own live stream, what did she do? She decided to hit back. So then she started making false accusations about me that were never proven. She said the same things that you said, but even worse. But as time went by, I was vindicated once again. <laughs> you gotta love the truth, right? The Lord has the righteous back all the time. And I give it all up to the Lord. Praise Jesus. But anyhow, Tim and Crafton were very hospitable to me in the very beginning. Oh, they liked my company. They enjoyed my company. I used to go over and do live streams, those sorts of things all the time with them. I was up on a panel with uh, Mr. Predicto there. You know, that's kind of where I really met Mr. Predicto. And that's where our relationship kind of really took off, you know. I was very accepting of the hospitality that everybody was showing me. And people wanted to ask me questions concerning scripture, that sort of thing. So hey, I was on it, right? <laughs> so anyhow, I went over there. They didn't know. They thought I was a progressive minister at first. Because Kim and Crafton are all down with the LGBTQ church stuff. And they thought I was too, but they were completely mistaken that I am not a progressive pastor. In fact, I'm actually a very far-right conservative one. <laughs> but you know something? The Bible itself is pretty far right when you really think about it. As time went by, Kim and Crafton did not appreciate my biblical truth, my biblical understanding, and the way I professed the truth from my mouth. They were very critical of me. It started to boil in the hot water, you know. And I guess once the frog was completely boiled, Kim started to strike out against me. And of course, you have a right to defend yourself in your community, so that's exactly what I did. I started doing pushback videos concerning them to reveal to them that the things you were saying about me was not true. Well, Kim and Crafton took it to a whole new level. So Kim starts saying the exact same things that you were saying. Kim and Crafton started to make the same accusations that you did, all because I was giving money to many different people throughout the community, and several of these people were single moms, but of course these single moms more than likely are struggling, and you know, uh, <laughs> so to give them a few dollars here and there through a super chat automatically turns me into some kind of pervert. 
<laughs> Why don't you ask these ladies that I ever step over the line with them and stuff? I'm going to read you a little, uh, a little statement from Cherokee Girl pretty soon. But before I do, let's continue on this. So Kim and Crafton started to say the same things about me that you are. That essentially I was trying to groom <laughs> single young women in our community. Why? Because I gave a lot of these women super chats. <laughs> I mean, I gave Crafton several super chats. Was I grooming Crafton too? <laughs> Sorry, I don't go for that man on man stuff, okay? <laughs> if I give super chats to men, am I grooming them as well? That's what I'm talking about. Look, I gave super chats to a lot of people, not just single young moms, which I'm sure they appreciated it. In fact, I'm still a member of Granny's Watching Channel. Now, I haven't been over there in a long time, but every month, uh, my membership is automatically taken out of my bank account and given to her. And even though I don't go over there, I'll continue to uh, give her a little something every month just to help her out in any way I can. So you equate giving super chats to people, a process of grooming. That's ridiculous and shameful. And in all honesty, I believe, uh, Tawanda, that if Stellar seen that post, he would probably say to you, that was probably a little over the top there, Tawanda. I honestly believe that Stellar himself would probably correct you. Anyhow, Doug speaks on a lot of what happened to Kim and Crafton after they attacked the pastor. And he goes on to talk about what happened to Natasha Cooper for attacking a pastor. And he kind of points to a timeline that the moment these people started to do these things towards a man of God, all of a sudden, things are falling apart for them. And it's very interesting on how he lays it out. And you certainly got to go over and watch it, everybody. Now, I wanted to take a moment here and read a statement from Cherokee Girl. Cherokee Girl watched Doug's video, and I guess she had an opinion on all this stuff that Tawana was saying. So she herself left a comment, and I certainly appreciate it. But let's hear what she has to say. She writes, Being a religious person, you probably know that evil is afraid of good. As far as Preacher Mill goes, I believe he is a good man. I believe we've known each other now for two years now. We have each other's personal information, and he has never, capital letters, never been inappropriate or out of line with me. And you know something? I talk to a lot of women in private, and they're opening up their hearts to me, and they're telling me about their day, and they're telling me that their husbands and their boyfriends are a jerk, and what do I do, and tells me about their teenage children who are out of control, and they tell me about their personal lives, and how their relationships are not the best with their husband and their children, and they tell me a lot of things. And of course, me and Cherokee Girl also have a line of communication. She's a good friend of mine. She's after, she sent me this beautiful necklace not that long ago, and I have it put away up in my wife's china cabinet. It looks so beautiful. Cherokee girl herself says he's not inappropriate or flirtatious or any of those things with me. Because that's not my goal here, guys. I'm married 34 years. <laughs> Chase and skirt, those days are all over for me. <laughs> now, of course, there are a lot of married men that still, you know, chase skirt. <laughs> but are those married men in positions where they have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ who keeps them in their place? who corrects them daily, who speaks to their heart every day. Do these men who chase skirt while their wives are at home, are these men vessels of Christ? Are they speaking the word of God? Probably not. So in closing, guys, that's my video for today. I just wanted to say thank you to Cherokee Girl and all the comments. you got to read all the comments in Doug's channel. Like I said before, when somebody represents themselves in court, they probably look like a fool. Only a fool represents himself in court, right? <laughs> so he always have a lawyer. Same thing in this situation. If I speak only for myself, well, I'm just speaking for myself. But when others speak on your behalf, that's truly meaningful. Anyhow, guys, that's my video for today. Now, don't forget to go on over and watch Doug's video. The link will be in uh, somewhere on my page, more than likely the comment spot. And I want you to watch his video where he goes into detail about Kim Crafton. He talks a bit about Stellar. He uh, calls out this lady to one, all that good stuff. So anyhow, guys, go over, check out his video, and God bless.